Good morning, good morning, everyone. And what a good morning it is. We finally got volatility back in markets and not just downside volatility, but for the first time in a little while, it feels like some upside volatility. We've got altcoins moving left and right. We've got coins like LDO putting in like a 2x in under a week. We've got Litecoin, which looks great. We've got Bitcoin breaking out over the daily trend. Ethereum's moving hot. So today's video is going to cover all of that action. Um, we're going to look at some of the high time frame charts, some of the stuff I'm excited about, um, some of the risks involved um, with some of the price action right now, and if we can find any setups, uh, potentially long or short, on any of the coins. Um, I'm going to specifically cover the tickers that you guys see on the right side of your screen today, Matic, Ethereum, Litecoin, Link, and Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of a lot of coins we can talk about, and if there's anything you guys are interested in, leave it in the comments below. I'll get into it. I'll, I'll get into them maybe tonight, maybe in another video. Maybe I'll do something tomorrow again. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to shout out uh, the clinic, which is my Discord that I run um, that now has 230 members. Um, we cover all financial markets, crypto, equities, macro, and so on. Feel free to check it out. The link is in the description box below, as well as a link to my Twitter where you guys can catch updates of the trades that I cover here on YouTube. So definitely check that out. And lastly, if you've been out of crypto markets for some time and you're looking for an awesome place to buy and trade crypto in 2023, be sure to check out Bybit. Um, if you guys sign up from now till the end of January using the link in the description box below, if you use that link, you'll get up to $30,000 in sign up bonuses and zero fees on spot trading. So check that out, guys. All those links will be in the description box below. All right, let's get into this video. We're going to start off with Bitcoin, which is what we have on the chart right here. Um, the first thing I want to point out on Bitcoin is this. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, this first thing I want to point out is this H4 200 EMA, which I use as my daily bias, right? So for me, if Bitcoin is trading above and holding above the the H4 200 EMA, I'm generally bullish on markets. I'm looking for upside. I'm looking for upside on altcoins. And I'm basically just using a risk to manage approach. Where am I wrong? How can I be wrong if I'm looking for longs? Where are the invalidations? Where are the resistance levels above, right? But I'm generally looking for longs. If we're below it, it's the exact opposite. I'm looking for shorts, right? So if I put this in log, just so it's a little bit easier to visualize, you guys can clearly tell the daily um, after consolidating. Well, let's go in the four hour. After consolidating below the H4 200 MA and then above, we've gotten we've gotten a momentum spike upwards, which is carrying a lot of coins with it. Um, a lot of stuff has been front running this Ethereum. If we look at Ethereum's own H4 200 EMA. Um, it's been above it for quite some time. And you can look how beautiful this is, right? So we got confluence of this mini range high, a breakout above it, a test of this supply block. Uh, we dropped back within the... Um we drop back confluent with range high, so you're retesting prior resistance as support, confluent with the H4 200 MA. Look at this move we're getting right now all the way up to these uh, clearly defined range highs, right? So let's just move back to Bitcoin. So what we'll do, we'll do Ethereum in a minute. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Um, but all of this is just simply to say is that momentum is with the bulls, right? So momentum is with the bulls and the trend is your friend until the trend ends. And right now the trend is upwards. You've got a very clear higher, high, higher, low structure on the four hour pointing upwards, taking out all top side liquidity. The next gut check for, for Bit Bitcoin is going to be 17.5. Um, you know, with all the momentum that we have right now and being as that it's, you know, January 9th, you know, we're just started the new year. And uh, ES, um, you know, just just for just for um, posterity's sake to cover all the bases and, 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 you know, say we don't miss anything. ES has been in a long consolidative effort, or long consolidative range and broke out to the upside. Now, it's got a lot of resistance above. There's a lot of things to look at, a lot of headwinds. But all of these things. Are, are just pointing to near-term, short-term upside, which is what you're seeing, right? And the last thing we'll do before we get into more of this stuff is DXY. And we're just going to cover, you know, how DXY for a minute there looked like it was giving us a risk-off signal because we've got this from the, let's start from the monthly. We've got this beautiful range, 
right? Let me get rid of this. This is distracting for me. We've got a range for multiple years, a breakout, a demand block put in, right? A, a big move upwards, parabolic move upwards, and a, and a down move back into this demand. So we're expecting, you know, the targets are just moving lower and lower, right? For DXY, there's uh, people like myself who are looking for DXY to bounce somewhere at 106. Then I was thinking, okay, the monthly block. And now it seems like we're, we're pushing even lower than that. You know, we could possibly come down to 100. Who knows, right? Who knows what's up with DXY? All we can do is is monitor it uh, day by day, week by week, and, and stay fluid in our ideas and our opinions. So for DXY, I, I was looking at this and I was saying, okay, look, on the daily, we're printing lower lows. The RSI is generally flat and upwards. We're getting a bullish divergence in the momentum, right? A bullish divergence on the daily into monthly supply. That's what that I have, uh, monthly demand, excuse me. That's what I have marked out here, right? And we got a reaction out of that. I was looking at this, I was saying, okay, we've got a market structure break. If I come down into the four hour, we'll get rid of this. I was looking at this right here and I was like, okay, look, we've broken out above. Um, let me remove this just so it's, it's easier to see. Um, we've broken out above this downtrend, right? We've got a market structure break. As long as this green box holds, right, we should be good. And what have we seen? We've seen it slam below and set new lows, right? So that's not particularly bullish, um, for DXY and, and not particularly bearish for risk assets, which is why we're seeing crypto and the likes move so strongly. So when the data is pointing to sort of a risk on environment, which is what DXY is saying for now, um, with this failed breakout into a breakdown into new lows, we're going to say that we're risk on, right? So you've heard me say that multiple times. I just wanted to cover briefly ES and DX, uh, DXY, right? But let's get into, you know, the real thing we want to talk about is how high is this bear market uh, rally going? Is this a bear market rally? Is this the start of a really, really strong like bear market rally, like multiple months like we had of summer of last year? Um, how high could we go? Could we reclaim 20K? You know, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. I know that all these things are on on your mind. They're on my mind as well. But all we get, all we can do, um, what happened to... Okay, seems like everything got erased. I'm not sure what's going on. Doesn't matter, I can redraw it. Um, but for now, for, for, for Bitcoin, right? Um, uh, what, what are the top side targets? So we've got this supply block, right? The same thing that everyone's looking at. This little bit of a hiccup, this little supply block right here, which should be resistance, but we're trading well into it. So for me, um, I don't know if this is going to call the top. Uh, but we can look for confluent risk off factors. Right now, we're trading well, well, well within it. I think we're going to close within it, right? So whereas we had uh, multiple wicks into it, right, looking like this is going to react bearishly, we, now we have this four-hour candle pushing well into it, right? So for me, this is just more and more of bullish momentum, and we don't want to preemptively fade bullish momentum, do we, right? We want to ride with the trend. So the next confluent area for Bitcoin is going to be like this 18K high, right? So we, if we draw out the range, right, this is the, the bounce swing high. This is our swing low. We took out the low. We took out the high. We traded right around the 50% mark. Now we're pushing back towards the high. We're sitting in this, uh, in this bearish order block right here, right? Um, pushing above this, the next thing you're going to get is probably the 18K highs, right? Let's look at uh, some EMAs on the daily and see where they're lining up right now. Um, does this have enough data? Yes, it does. Okay, so the green one we have here is our 100-day EMA, right, since we're on the daily chart, and the red one is our 200-day EMA. Uh, we tagged the, the, the 100 a few times. We tagged the 200 a few times along this bear market, right? If we clear... Now this is this is going to be uh, where where we're looking at upside targets. If we're really really bullish and we can maintain this momentum for a very long time without another black swan, we don't get hit with an FTX like we did right here, right? What you'd be looking for is a risk off at the day 100 at the 100 day moving average, which is confluent with range highs right around 18k. You would risk off there. You would look for Bitcoin to try to bit like hold this supply, this this bearish order block as support, right? So you would look at something like this, push into the range highs, push into here, try to pull back, find some buyers, and then we can push upwards. And when we do that, we clear the daily, the next logical target is gonna be the 200 day, confluent with this top right here, 
right? All you've got is this inefficiency. You've got a big void, a big inefficient void, right? That can get filled, that can get filled rather quickly. Like crypto can pump like no other guys. Don't, don't, don't forget that you clear a, a multiple month, multiple month range, a three month range. You break over the day 100 moving average, uh, the, the 100 day moving average, which we haven't done in quite some time. You're probably going to get a gap fill into this 200 day, right? Which would be confluent with this FTX top. FTX collapse top. So that's Bitcoin for me. That's nice and simple. One thing at a time. We've got the bearish order block. We clear that. We hold it as support. We break above the daily. We break above uh, the range high. We can start aiming for there. But for now, um, I would say if you're in longs and you've been long from down here, this would be a good time to start taking some profits. And then if you break above this, you you can follow the momentum all the way back into range highs, right? So this is for me. If you're if you're in some high leverage longs and you're well in profit, now is a good time to maybe take something off the table, pay yourself. You've made the correct move. You've been on the right side. You don't want to see these things round tripped. You don't want CPI to surprise you or Powell to surprise you or something like that and give all the profits back to the markets. If you're in it for the long run and you're looking at high time frame and you're looking at multiple months and you're thinking, hey, I just got an entry at 16, 17K and I want to ride this to 20, 30K, maybe the end of 2023, you're doing something like that. That's a different story. We're simply talking about lower time frame traders right now that if you're in some long positions, 20x, 50x longs, this is a decent place to to you know remove some of the uh, remove some of the risks, especially with the macro catalysts that we have coming up this week. That's Bitcoin done. Um, Ethereum is more of the same. I briefly touched on Ethereum. Ethereum definitely looks better than Bitcoin as it's ha as it has been looking better than Bitcoin for the better part of the last two years. In the bull market, in the bear market, it's been the alpha asset. It's been stronger than Bitcoin. We're not going to argue that. And the ETH BTC valuation supports that as well. So where is Ethereum? Um, just like we talked about that bearish order block presenting itself on Bitcoin, Ethereum has some local resistance that it has to deal with right now as well, right? So we've got this... Uh, um, this uh, swing high, right? So we got the FTX collapse, the bounce, the high was set, confluent with the bullish order block right here, which is now uh, resistance, right? If we just take this line and take it all the way over, do something like this, you guys can see that this sort of 1330, 1340 level has defined us for the better part of six, seven months, right? So we're coming up on that. We are trading above the daily, which you guys know um, has, you know, we haven't tested the 200 day in a very, very long time, but, you know, flipping this um, flipping this uh, range high as support, breaking above it, consolidating above it, that opens up the 200 day, that opens up some of this resistance up here. Again, like I talked about on Bitcoin, you fill in all this inefficiency. There's a very big inefficient move all the way down due to the FTX collapse. We accept above range highs. We start breaking above here. We consolidate above here. I think a push to 1500s in the cards. I wouldn't be surprised. And I think it honestly would be very, very easy for Ethereum to do something like that in a day, in two days, in three days. You know, a 12% move is nothing for crypto. A 12% move, especially in a risk on environment where DXY is falling apart, is very possible. And I wouldn't fade it too soon, right? Okay, so that's really all I want to cover with the majors, and now we're going to move on to some of the um, to some of the uh, to some of the altcoins that I think um, are offering pretty good pretty good signals on both ways, right? So Matic, I'm looking at Matic, and I want to kind of take you through a little bit of a story on Matic before I get into the trade. Um, Matic for me is in a high time frame downtrend, and I know to a lot of people this may look like it's just ranging. But uh, if you follow the story, right, so we have a breakdown, right, we've got this um, point of breakdown, right, um, tested as resistance, tested as resistance, broke well above it, right, broke well above it, and we were kind of pushing, we consolidated, we led to this big breakout, and this big breakout, if we uh, now, if we draw this range, right, we take this as a range high, we take this as a range low, right, we've been trading inside, we break out of the range, we obviously fail and SFP the entire thing. So this is a big deviation, a big failed breakout of the range, right? So if you're going to do that, if you're going to, you know, fail range highs, what I like to say as a range trader, if you're going to SFP the highs, it's now time to test the lows, right? So we kind of did that. We tested the lows multiple times. We pushed back towards the highs. We put in a lot of supply. Right. So if we're looking at this from a range perspective, um, this bounce was just, you know, it's just 
uh, supply. Like, you know, you know, sellers came in and overpowered buyers. You get a big inefficient move down or coming back all the way down into these lows. And now you're simply back testing, in my opinion, sort of this um, medium term or, or you can call it a high time frame, medium term, uh, medium time frame, uh, extremely important SR level. Right. So we're tagging that right now. We're tagging the underside of that right now. And the underside of this very clean SR level is also confluent with a bearish order block. So for me on Matic, this is a place if you again, if you've caught longs into this location, this is a place to be risking off. This is confluent with our Bitcoin idea. This is a confluent with our Ethereum idea, right? So this is a risk off moment. You flip this. Yes, it does open. Uh, it does open the gates for much, much higher, maybe 98, maybe clear out some of a lot of these highs, right? But until then, we have to treat resistance as resistance, no matter how euphoric we are. Um, in, in in these moves, in these trending moves, there's always this moment where like the early the early bulls catch a big move. Then it's on to the risk appetite of the people that are sidelined, right? The sidelined people take you the second leg. So if this is your area for for longs that caught this leg to take profits, right? And we get a and we get a pullback, then I would be looking at daily trends, right? So this is this is the daily trend that I use, the H4 200 EMA. Let's talk about, let's say, uh, Matic has a pullback into the the daily and then and then holds it, right? So if it holds this, this is you clearly defining your risk, right? So you're bidding into uh, a daily retest. You can also look at this as like an SR level that we're flipping this prior resistance into support. You get the daily confluence. You bid into that. Loss of that is your easy invalidation. Your high side targets, again, are going to be take this out and then test this order block again. Clearing the order block, you push higher. Right. If we're not going to get a pullback um, and you're sidelined and you're looking at Matic and you're saying, I want higher prices, what I would do is I would allow this to break without me. I would allow this to break without me. I, I don't want to partake in this move. I want other people to be the risk appetite. Uh, I want them to long the top. You guys long the top. I'll sit sidelined. And once you long the top, I'll start defending with you. Now this is a breaker. So a breaker is simply you've broken a, a, a order block. So this is your bearish order block, right? This bearish order block should be now resistance, right? So you're holding this level of support. Bulls tried to come in, step in, hold this area. You break down below it. Now you're testing it, right? So this should be a place that bears hold the line. If bears lose this line and bulls can push the price up here, now this is bull territory. I will join and defend this. And again, it's all about defining your risk, right? So my risk is defined. If we drop back inside, I can cut it, right? So again, you push, you push, sorry, sorry, that's not how it's going to look. You push above here. I'll, I'll, I'll bid the pullback. I'll defend this. We lose this level. We start closing back below it. I'm out again. So I've given you guys two ways to look at Matic uh, on a lower time frame, but then in a higher time frame, like I was explaining uh, earlier, and I got a little sidetracked, right? Is that to me, this looks like a high time frame downtrend where you've got a high here, a low, a lower high, a lower low, and this to me could be an area to put in a, a lower high, right? So even where we are right now, so let's say something like this, right? So you maybe we trade into this order block, maybe we drop back to look below it. That's a deviation of this of this very significant SR that I laid out. Right. That is your lower high. And then you're obviously looking for the lower low. That's going to be the final test for me of this range low area. Right. So that's Matic for me. Like I said, I believe that it's in a very high time frame downtrend. Uh, I've told you guys why I believe that, you know, it's SFP over the highs. I believe that I'm biased. I I'm biased. and I believe that it's going to head towards the lows. This is kind of how I'm looking at it on a high time frame level on a low time frame level. I hope everything that I said made sense as far as taking a long from this level playing off the level, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, that brings me to um, Litecoin. Uh, Litecoin is something I'm very excited about, and I'm gonna. I did a whole video on it, so it's my last video. If you guys want to know what I think about Litecoin in in very extensive detail, watch that video. That's gonna cover it a lot better and a lot more thoroughly than I will in this video. But simply speaking, let's go to a cleaner chart. Simply speaking, on the monthly, you've got um, a range for multiple months, a breakout, a retest in that range, right? So this this candle right here, we traded back below it, we closed above it, right? Showing demand down here, and now we're pushing above. From the monthly, not much to say, very bullish market structure. You, you've broken out of the range, you tested the range, you found demand, and now you're gonna push higher, right? So from a monthly, very clean. From a weekly perspective, 
right, you've got these very clearly defined high time frame levels at 94 and 107, right? And we, we don't need this trend. I want these guys, right? And then you have the 100 and 200 week moving averages, which are confluent with this 94 to 107 levels. I think Litecoin is bullish into 94 to 107. Um, that's my high time frame bias on a lower time frame now. Um, let's take this chart that I had over here. Right on a lower time frame. Again, we're going to use the same technique that we just talked about on Matic, which will be the breaker. Right. So this for me is a bearish order block, just like this was a bearish order block. And when you trade above um, a bearish order block, you put an impulse candle like this. That that order block should now be defended by bulls, which it was right here. And you got another uh, look at that on an even lower time frame. Right. So this is your bearish order block. Uh, you put a breaker above it. You test it as support, get demand in here, you break above it, right? So we're just doing that again and again and again. And I believe that Litecoin now, if we're going to maintain this momentum from here, if you don't want to buy here, which I think is is probably not the smartest idea, and you wait for it to come back, well, this is your level to buy, right? So this is prior resistance, right? Prior, prior um, uh, supply block. You trade back into it. Bulls reload their longs. Bulls come back in. I think that's how you maintain this trend, right? So confluence of 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 prior resistance now being support. You're defending the breaker. That's kind of how I'm looking at Litecoin from a a, a lower time frame perspective. The invalidation is simply closing below this. So if we if we do this whole thing right and we close back below this and we retrace this entire impulse, that to me is bearish. I think there's going to be a bigger pullback, and the pullback could be like. Like I always mention the H4 200 EMA, which is right here, right? So uh, you lose this. Maybe we trade all the way back into here, and then you would simply say, okay, well, um, this is resistance. This was resistance. Now this is support that led to this leg. This is your daily daily move, uh, daily move, trend. We trade into this. That would be the area to look for, right? So those are, so those are some ideas for Litecoin. Like I said, I'm very high time frame bullish. And if you want more Litecoin information, definitely watch the last video that I did on Litecoin. It's literally the last video that I did. And now uh, link. I think I'm going to do Adam too. Let me just add that to the list so I don't forget. I have some I have some stuff to say about Adam. And then yeah, we've got link here. So link is kind of the same idea that I've been uh, talking about. Um, wait, is it here? Oh, this is Litecoin Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Well, we can just cover that for a second. Litecoin Bitcoin again um, on the weekly, right? So you've had this. Completely brutal, you know, high time frame downtrend. Now we've got a market structure break where we're putting in higher highs and higher lows instead of lower highs and lower lows. We're putting in a higher high, higher low situation um, on the monthly. Yeah, I've got this picture here because Litecoin has been such a poor performer against Bitcoin. But you've got this breaker here, the same same technique I keep talking about. You've got a breaker. You've got a bearish order block that was impulsed above. We're holding it as support. We're, we're finding demand in that area. I think Litecoin looks great. OK, now that's Litecoin done. Let's go to Link. Link, I don't have too much to say. Um, I think it's a pretty clean chart. Um, let me get a better one. I don't like that one. I think it's a pretty clean chart. All right. Remove all this. I think you've been in a multiple month range, right, which is undeniable, which is uh, could be accumulation, could be distribution, could be bullish, could be bearish. We don't know yet. It depends on which way this range breaks, right? Very, very clean range. Um, what I want to talk about more specifically is on the lower time frames, right? So you've got this area of supply, which broke down. This is your point of breakdown right here. So we're going to mark out that. We're going to make a box. Uh, let's just mark this out, something like this, drag it across. Now you guys can see the same kind of setup that I've been talking about multiple times. You've got a breaker above that. A, the point of breakdown was taken back by the bulls. Now all you want is this point of breakdown to be defended. Right. So if if you've if you've longed this, you know, good job. Um, your invalidation for your longs is if Litecoin starts closing back below here. Right. If you if you start doing that, I'd say that's pretty bearish for me, since I'm a range range bound trader and I, I focus on price action. For me, this is going to be a, a, a deviation of this level. As long as bulls are defending this green box, defending the breaker, I think you aim for a lot higher. And I think you aim for this area supply right here. <clears throat> 
which I believe if you long right around there, right around that box, that's about a six, seven, eight percent move upwards, which is very, very valuable long. And I think you have, again, a very clearly defined risk level, right? So this is the level that you want to play off for me, the way that I trade in my system. Uh, this, this breaker box needs to be defended by bulls. And as long as it's defended, again, my targets are going to be much higher. It's going to be right here around six, uh, 6.5, and then taking that back, it's going to be 6.8, right? So 6.5, 6.8 are my high side targets for for uh, Link. Again, there's there's nothing but air here. There's there's just a big void in price action, so it should be very easily, very easy to clear and move all the way up to to 650, and that is going to be Link done. And the very last thing I'd like to talk about is Adam, because Adam is displaying. Um, let me find the chart that I'm working with. A very, very clean high time frame level. Very, very clean high time frame level on the weekly. Okay, so this is my weekly bias for Adam. Adam has a level here at 1160, which has been resistance right here last year, support, and then a, and then a big inefficient move downwards. We've been trading below it. So for me, first test best test. I believe that as we trade back into this from the underside, so we're going to, for the first time in, you know, uh, what is this, six months, five, five months, five, six months, we're going to test the underside of it. And we're likely going to reject this at least on the first attempt, right? But for me to make an actionable trade on a higher time frame, uh, on a higher time frame basis, what I want to see is Adam actually deviate this level. So trade above it, Right, do something like this and start closing below it and reject the underside of it. That is a very strong signal for me that this level is to be respected still. And if you look at the left here, we have a supply zone, right? So for me, that's it. That is a ultimate green light signal to short the hell out of Adam, especially given how inefficient this move has been on the upside. There hasn't been any any support put in. It's been sort of a unidirectional move in a in a low liquidity environment. If you get rejected off this level, right? To me, that's going to open this whole thing up, clean up all these lows, and, and you may just move really quickly back down to eight five seven five something like that. That's what I'm looking at for Adam. Uh, on a high time frame basis, I have a pretty strong conviction that if this level is SFP'd, if we deviate above this weekly level, we start closing below it on the weekly. Let's say we put in a candle on the weekly that has a wick, uh, wick into gray, wick into filling this fair value gap, and then closes below it. That's a strong signal for me as well. Um, and then the buy it, and then the invalidation is simply start closing above it. You start closing above 1160 on lower time frames, on higher time frames. That's a warning signal. You may have to go all the way higher. May have to go to 14. Maybe the bottom's in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We move from there. But for me, on Adam, the strongest, the strongest thing I see on this chart, which should be glaringly obvious is the 1160 level and we're going to play around that above 1160 hold 1160 i'm bullish below 1160 uh close below 1160 i'm bearish i'm looking for liquidity to be taken from the downside and this has been a very long video guys if you stuck with me throughout the entire thing i appreciate it so much it's super cool to know that there's people out there that that are you know interested in learning and, and you know for me um being a guy that never paid for any education in trading everything that i got uh is from online, from other traders, from YouTube, seeing people win, seeing people on CT. I just want to give back everything that I learned and, and inspire other people to maybe pick up some of the ways, some of the techniques that I use uh, and, and, and can build you guys' own systems as well. But uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you stuck with me, I appreciate it. Uh, give the video a like, and, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Goodbye.